Right, we are back with another self-publishing questions video about all the basic things to learn about self-publishing. So let's dive into question number one. Were there specific terms and conditions that surprised you that we should be aware of? So this is the most important thing is reading the terms and conditions. There's a lot of people that publish on Amazon without reading it through. And in there, you learn that Amazon would like you to have one account. The only exception to this is if you have a business and uh, you are building a, a business as a self-publisher. So you need to make sure that you're not using a bunch of personal email addresses and signing up a bunch of, bunch of accounts. You can have multiple how people in a household have an account too, but you need to be at least 18 years old. So the specific terms and conditions, I wasn't really surprised by anything, but I do think it's important that people read it because when you don't, then it really kind of leaves you exposed. And that's with any platform, right? You wanna make sure that you understand the terms and conditions of the things that you're agreeing to. And inside of these terms and conditions, Amazon basically tells you like play by our rules or you're not invited to play. And that is normal for every terms and conditions that we read. There's we, a lot of times we just don't go through the process of getting to the nitty gritty of what people are asking. Now, Amazon is great because it is going to print and ship your book for your customer, but it's not the end of the world if you can't use Amazon. Amazon is just a great place for the ecosystem. There's tons of customers and it really takes off your plate of having to do all that work. So in that regard, like it has, as any platform, it has its terms and conditions, right? So that is a good question. Why did you choose KDP? So if you follow me, you know that I wrote a book. I wanted to write a book about how to be authentic online. And when it was time to publish, I just started learning about KDP. And then that's when I learned about finding keywords first and creating books around it. My book was already done. So it's not one of my best sellers. I do want to have a book in the future as I become a better writer that sells much longer from my words. And so that's something that I'm working on. I chose KDP because it takes care of all the shipping and fulfillment. I chose KDP because it is one of the biggest online shopping platforms in the world. So those two advantages make it really, really fun. And I chose it because I saw that I could build passive income from it, which I did. So that's a really, really good question. There is platforms like Ingram Spark or Bar Barnes and Noble. There's lots of different platforms. So knowing kind of your why is important. I think when I create and write my next book, I do want to branch out on those other platforms because it is a book that I'm written, written and not just something researched or created for like planners or journals or medium content. So that's a good question. If you have a product, can you still sell on Amazon through KDP? Do they have to do they have to do the printing and shipping? So Amazon does all the printing and shipping, and that's what makes it so attractive is that you're not having to ship that out to your customer. And you can have a fulfillment by Amazon account. You can have a product on Amazon that's FBA and KDP is separate. And I just learned that the Amazon platform for ads for books is different than FBA. And that's what I've been teaching myself this past year. So I always thought when I looked at YouTube videos for pay-per-click and low campaigns with low budgets, I always didn't quite align. And that's because it wasn't for books. So learning Amazon ads has been awesome. That's totally off topic, but you can have a product you can sell also through KDP because they do all the printing and shipping for your book. So that's a good question. Is there a minimum or recommended length for activity books? So you need to print at least 24 pages. And if you look through books on Amazon in the book category in children's in different areas, you can see a matter there's anywhere from 24 to 300. It really depends. I think the most important thing to do is think about it from the customer perspective. What would they want? And I would say like something around the 110 range of pages is a really good start because the customer feels like they're getting the bang for their buck, but then also you're providing enough of an experience for them to come back. It's really difficult to price a book accordingly when it's only 24 pages long if it's an activity book because there's not much there. It's very thin and you'll notice that you don't get a good binding. You don't get a good spine 
to even put a title when it's super thin. So I'll have to share some examples of that in the future so you can see um, what you want to shoot for and um, be able to create a book that people like. You can also look at the reviews for pages for books that are created with less pages and see what the customers say about it because that's very telling on was it made for the customer or was someone just trying to get a quick buck out of the book? Good, good question. What has your experience been with the printing and quality of KDP for smaller products, children's books, notebooks? So I've mentioned this uh, previously before because my background is in printmaking. So I have used newsprint, which is newspaper. I have used, I've handmade paper. I've used very, th very thick paper. And so the quality and printing of Amazon is comparable to a nice printer at a copy center. So you're getting premium high quality. That means that's similar to copy paper, but it's not cardstock. So when we think about children's books and you're using premium or standard ink, it's going to turn out nice. Now, is it gonna be glittery and embossed and high end like some of these traditional publishers can do that have huge budgets? No, but it's a good start, right? So the notebooks, super good because even the composition notebooks are printed on this premium quality paper and that's more expensive and nicer than what you would get probably at a grocery store or a department store for no, well, not department store, but maybe um, like Target. Some of the pages for notebooks that you buy for your kids for back to school are very thin and this quality is superior to that. And that really should be considered when you're pricing your book because it's higher end pr uh, material than what they're typically getting. Now, a lot of composition notebooks have a, like a, lot. a lot of composition notebooks have a chipboard um, cover and Amazon does not offer that. It is matte or gloss and it is thinner. So that is something to keep in mind, but that is also a good question. If we solely use KDP, can we purchase author copies at a discount for in-person events? Yes, per order, you can order up, I think to 999 copies and you get a discount because you're not paying for the fulfillment on Prime. So you are saving money, but it does take longer. So you need to plan accordingly for your events to be able to have those book it's, books there right, for your event. They do not do soft, they do not do jackets. So you can do hardcover or you can do soft cover or you can do a combination of both, but you certainly can save money by doing author co copies for something in person. And you can also send people to your Amazon to buy the books there to help them rank and get more exposure and visibility. So that is also a really good question. Is it helpful, next question, is it helpful to put a copyright on each pay product, even a repeating page notebook? I'm thinking yes from your experiences. So anytime that you create something under US copyright law, you own the intellectual property for it, but you cannot submit a copyright application for something that has repeated pages like a notebook or a journal that is the same. It needs to be custom and unique because that's already been invented, right? Composition notebooks have already been invented and saying that you made this makes it no different than anything else. Copyright is designed to protect individuals' work. And so being able to repeat page notebooks is not going to really protect you. Now, you can add motifs and things like that to it, but it is much more difficult when you apply for application for copyright. If it is just a line notebook, you can copyright the covers. So it is helpful to copyright each product going through the copyright uh, department, but also understanding that under US law, when you create something, you are protected as the IP owner. And um, we can always get more details case by case from an attorney. I'm not an attorney. I just act like one. Just kidding. You can get more feedback from an attorney. And if you need that information, let me know. That's a really good question. So this was a really fun self-publishing Q&A. Please let me know what other questions you guys have. Love you lots. Peace out.